you don't have enough calories. Uh, but you're saying even 4,000 per day was oh, not enough. I, I was starving by oh, day five. Sure. I was, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but yeah, so most of that or, or almost half of that is coming from just goo gels. Um, I had, I would carry 16 gels per day. Um, and that's something that I know I can just get down no matter what, you know, at any time, any place, any, no matter how my stomach's feeling and, and something I practice with a lot when I run. So, so just the regular goo energy gels, they're like one ounce, 100 calories, basically just pure sugar. Um, and I would carry 16 of those per day. And then in addition to that, I just had like a variety of, um, you know, a variety of foods. I mainly stick with, you know, carbohydrates. I don't do fats as much. I'd, I've never tried to like fat it up, get fat adapted or anything like that. Um, so I would have, I had some tailwind, had some instant mashed potatoes, um, some these like little soft pretzel bites, um, peanut butter crackers, tortillas, um, a little bit of beef jerky. Um, but yeah, you know, so that's about it. So again, there's about half gels and half real food um, and about 4,000 4, calories per day total, um, which came to the, the total weight. Sorry, I've got to pull this up. Yeah, about 10 pounds of food um, for, for the five days. And like I said, that was not quite enough. <laughs> I basically ran out of food by the end of the fourth day. Oof. That's uh, that must be scary being out there tr that far into the, into your, you know, into your attempt and then to just flat out run out of food. Yeah. Yikes. Um, it, it was scary, but at the same time, I sort of knew I had, you know, I had bailouts if I needed them. Um, by the, by the fifth day, I'm basically walking, I'm literally like walking almost through the town of Lake Placid. Sure. Um, so I knew I had bailouts plus, I mean, I just was in. I was totally in the zone the entire time. There was never a doubt in my mind that I wasn't going to finish no matter what. Um, and so I just, you know, I was just able to kind of completely push through it, um, even without food. All right. Now, uh, while you were out there, I like to ask people this question too. While you were out there, what, you know, maybe at the end of the day, what food, if you could have had anything flown into you, what did you want the most? Tell me about Def a meal that you were just craving. De pepperoni pizza. Ah, good call. Good Absolutely. Call. And and I usually get that crazy. I've I've realized it, it's really only been the last year, but but I I've realized that I get that craving for for pepperoni pizza um, when you know when I'm doing these big days. And sure. I was, it, it was compounded by the fact that at some point, so. I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but there's, you know, there's a big road walk that from, you know, when you finish like the lower 44 peaks to get up to Whiteface and Nestor, yep. um, which is the, you know, which I saved for the very end. Um, and on that, that road walk was the only time that I used my phone for anything other than just tracking um, or navigation. And I, I called my wife to like, let her know that I was okay and like discuss the logistics of her picking me up. But then I listened to a podcast <laughs> Um, while I was walking and completely randomly that podcast happened to be an interview with an ultra runner who's also a pizza maker and they were talking about pizza the entire time <laughs> and this is at this is day five I was completely out of food it was absolutely torture <laughs> yeah I bet I bet <laughs> um, but yeah pizza definitely was was what I was craving and then at the at the very end my wife you know, met me at the trailhead with pizza and a bunch of other food, but it was, and that, that was really amazing. I bet it went down quick too. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I think I ate like the entire, you know, an entire, like, I don't know, 16 inch pizza and in, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah, or less. sure. <laughs> sure. I always tell people, uh, if you, so after your hike, you go to Stewart's, if you can hit Stewart's when they have like a fresh pizza out, whoa, does it hit hard? And it is tasty in that moment. But anyways, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So day one, which was a, which was Tuesday, June 22nd, you yeah. began. So now this was interesting. You began at the Allen mountain trailhead, or that's where you, yep. you, you know, you started your clock and everything 5 50 yep. AM, but then yep. you immediately walked down the sand, down the upper works road 
or up the Upper Works Road, however you want to look at it, to the Santanoni <laughs> Range. So what was that? Uh, what was that reasoning? So that goes back to the you know the underlying strategy for this route for this route that I laid out, which is you know very similar but slightly different than what people have done previously for the unsupported FKT. Um, would, and the underlying principle is just to minimize the amount of time I have to carry that bear canister. Basically. Ah, sure, um, sure. And so I started where I wanted to finish for day one, so I didn't have to carry that bear canister basically at all on day one. Um, so I started at the Allen trailhead and then, so then I can start immediately, you know, I just set down my pack. I put on, have my ultralight, you know, just one day's worth of food and my, and running vest water, you know, and water bottles. And that's basically it. And I just like run, you know, down the road, hit the Santa, you know, Santa Noni trailhead and, you know, head up that way. I did the Santas, um, you know, quickly, and um and then you know and then over to the sewards and then back and that was basically a full day but you know and it's a lot of miles right i think it, by doing it this way i'm adding i forget exactly but like probably at least 10 maybe more miles but i'm trading those miles for you know they're fast miles yeah instead of bushwhack miles. miles yeah well not only just the, not only saving the bushwhack but you know just saving the the heavy pack, right? Okay, the load sure. on your feet, which yep. I, I was, you know, I may have overestimated the, you know, the benefit of not carrying the heavy pack, but it's, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily, I don't regret it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, it worked for me. Um, and partly because mentally I knew, so that, that first day, right? So doing the Santas, then the Sewards, and then back to um, the Allen Trailhead comes out to i think like 40 miles uh, so let me pull it up i have a uh, 44 miles 13,000 yeah 44 feet miles 13,000 feet of game which is something that it's a lot it's definitely a big day but it's something that i've done plenty of times by this point um running mm -hmm. and you know and i know i could do it in well less than a full day like you know 16 hours or less sure um, and so you know something that i was mentally comfortable with it was a you know kind of a bite-sized start okay right um, so yeah, so anyway, it went pretty smoothly the day, the weather was pretty crappy that day. It was cold and rainy. Um, I was just like soaked to the bone by the time I got to the top of Cincinnati. Um, you know, and I was just like, I had a chill like the whole rest of the day because which you know, is the first wet. mountain of the day. Just so yeah, people no, know that's the, the, that's the, yeah, first mountain. the very beginning, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. only 45 more mountains to go. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it wasn't the best start. Um, and plus wet feet yeah. on a multi-day effort is, you know, a huge, you know, something you don't, you don't want to have. Um, but there's not always, you can't always control it. Um, and definitely those herd paths, you know, they're muddy, they're, sure. it, they're slick. Like there's no way to keep your feet dry really, especially when it's like actually raining. Um, now that's one thing we didn't hit on in the, uh, in the, the gear talk. What, uh, shoes were you wearing? What, what was that? Oh yeah. Good. Um, yeah, so I like the I I basically always for technical trails I wear Las Sportiva Bushidos, okay, um, which are a relatively light but still very sturdy like technical trail running shoe. Um, not a lot of cushion, um, and and they're relatively tight fitting, um, so they're you know they're really they handle really well over technical trails when you're trying to move fast. But the flip side is and and this also kind of came back to bite me in the end um you know as my feet would swell up they were really tight um and that only contributed to like blisters and mm. loss losing toenails and things like that oh brutal um, now when i have gone backpacking i've always said to myself man i'm just going to start carrying two pairs of shoes because so that i can switch and keep <laughs> switching shoes uh but like you know all you guys who do these fkts you're just doing them all in the one pair of shoe so did you not switch anything or like do you not feel the need to like even if you were to switch an insole let's say suddenly at that point the shoe becomes like something different and like it's going to hit the bottom of your foot slightly different you know and therefore keep foot fatigue down you don't feel you know go 44 miles 40 miles 35 miles so you're not feeling that you know that I guess fatigue is probably the best word by wearing the same shoe every day after day. 
No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think it's the same shoe. Like bringing insoles is an interesting idea at the very least, because if it gets, if the insole, like when the shoe gets wet, is really the insole that is the, um, you know, what's holding the water. So bringing dry insoles is not a bad idea in that sense. But in terms of like comfort, I don't think, at least for me, I don't think that makes much difference. Um, I mean, I know these shoes work really well for me. I basically don't get blisters with them. Uh I did get some, you know, due to having really prolonged, prolonged periods of time with wet feet and then also swollen feet. But you know, in general, I don't, I don't have issues with these shoes. Um, there, it's not a lot of cushioning to begin with. So there's not a lot of like deflation sure. <laughs> of the cushioning, Makes sense. Uh, which, yeah, which, you know, so they hold up really well. And the other thing is I started with a brand, you know, straight out of the box, brand new pair of shoes mm-hmm. um, to try to maximize that, you know, lifetime over the course of the five days. So got it. All right, yeah. so uh, you got to Santanoni, it was raining, and then you had to head, o- head over to Cooksacraga, Panther, and then you had to go over to the Seward Range. So how did the rest of the day end up? So, you know, it was pretty smooth. I was, you know, I was like the only person up on the San- – or, or there were two people up on the Santa Range. One of them was me. Um, I saw one other woman. We kind of crossed at Times Square at least once or twice. Um, but, but, yeah, you know, so I went from Santa down to Times Square, hit Cooch, and then Panther – it was all pretty quick. Um, I was moving fast. You know, I was excited. Had you know, like I had only my light pack and fresh legs. Um, I was maybe moving a little too fast. Those herd pa- I'd never been on the Santa Range, right? But those those herd paths are, um, you know, they're pretty tight. Um, I would go, going down the hills. I'd be taking the downhills pretty aggressive to try to you know move fast, and I would reach out my hands to like you know, brace against a tree to like hit a sharp turn or, you know, just like provide some extra stability. And, you know, those pine trees, they have those like really jag, like sharp, like broken branch nubs and things like that. And I just, my hands got cut to pieces by the time I was at the, you know, by the time I descended all the way from Panther, like back down to, I just, I followed the main herd path. So I was, I went down Panther to uh, Bradley Pond and, you know, by the time I had re- got back to the Bradley Pond Trail, like my hands were just completely sliced open. Like I had oh, just no. like cuts all over them. Um, and those ne- those never healed over the next five days. So for basically the rest of the time, I, it hurt to touch anything with my, with the palms of my hands. So That's that brutal. was not good. No, yeah. not at all. Um, but, but yeah, so then from the, you know, from the base of the Santas, I just followed the Bradley Pond Trail, which is you know, pretty rugged or maybe not rugged, but overgrown um, and seldom used is was the sense that I got. Again, I'm not, I'd not taken the Bradley Pond Trail before, but, Mm -hmm. but followed the Bradley Pond Trail up to Duck Hole. Um, It connects with the MPT briefly. Yep. Right. And then, um, and then over on the, what's that Ward Brook Trail, right. To, um, to the Seward range. And I hit, you know, went up and down Seymour, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't really remember too much about this, seg- this part of the day. It was, let me check my times. Um, it was, by the time I reached the base of Seymour, it was noon. Um, and then I went so up and down Seymour in less than two hours. Uh, and then up the Seward Range. I reached Donaldson by 4.30 and then, or, or sorry, Emmons by, by four o'clock. And then I was back down at the bottom of the Seward's by before six o'clock. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, it was going pretty smooth other than my hands being cut up and just being wet and a little bit cold. Um, you know, it was, I was moving fine. My legs felt good. You know, I, at this point I'm still like well within like what I've done in training multiple times. Sure. Um, sure. And yeah, and then from the base of Seward, um, you know, it's basically just mostly flat. It's a lot of, you know, a lot of like minor elevation. Mm -hmm. I just followed Ward Brook Trail back to Duck Hole. And then from Duck Hole, the, I forget what that trail is, but the the trail that goes straight to Upper Works basically um, by Henderson Lake. Um, And then... Yeah, you know, so that was a those long. I was tired, you know, I was tired. That those those stretches just seemed to like go forever. Um, I'd done I'd done this part of the, these trails before, um, and you know, similarly, that 
it was that day I did the the sewer range the hard way, right? Yep. Um, I had, you know, so it was, I was definitely having flashbacks to just like that feeling of like, where's the freaking parking lot?